Hi everybody, Paul here with PTZ Optics. And in this video, in our Hive tutorial series, we're gonna talk about the difference between local mode and cloud mode and what that enables for live video production. So local mode is the default mode when you are on the local area network. Currently, I'm in my studio. All of my video sources are in the studio. And you can see here, I am actually running this studio in local mode. I'm connected, I'm in the, in the client of the app, and it is in local mode. It is not in cloud mode. I could switch to cloud mode, actually, if I wanted to, but there's no need for me to do that because I can connect to all my sources in local mode. Local mode will generally be a little lower latency since it doesn't have to go to the cloud and higher quality in many cases. So I am going to stick with local mode. And we'll talk a little bit about why you would want to use local mode if you have access to it and why you'd like to use cloud mode when you are remote to the studio. Cloud mode is what enables remote production and remote control when you are not on the same local area network. So understanding this cloud toggle here is important and it's in the top right. And when the toggle is orange, you know that you are in cloud mode. And when it is toggled off, you know you are in local mode. Now, on a local area network, a local area network is a network of devices that generally has a router and a network switch. Those cameras can all be controlled over the local area network with Hive. Similar to PTZ Optics cameras with a, a joystick controller, we can control all of these cameras. It's a local production on the local area network. We could have Hive Studio being the controller for local cameras and still use it in conjunction with vMix or OBS or Wirecast on the same local area network. When we go to cloud mode, this is when we're doing remote camera control, when we're controlling the cameras in a studio that is on a separate local area network. So that is the, the key point. So when you're sharing access to someone who's not on your network in a different building, in a different state, in a different country, they will be joining via the cloud. And that is where when they join and they accept your invitation, they're going to see the cloud mode on. If they try to switch to local mode, they will not be able to access the cameras because they're not on the local area network. This is a workflow here where someone is connecting to the studio remotely and then outputting NDI to use with their vMix computer. This is another scenario where we have a remote computer connecting to three different studios and studio number one has two PTZ Optics cameras that are Hive linked. That means those cameras have already been connected to the Hive studio and they do not require any additional hardware. They do not require a computer to connect them to the Hive. In studio two, we have an older PTZ camera, an older box camera. They're not Hive linked. They don't have the processing power to collaborate and connect directly to the cloud. So they require Hive Studio to be running on a computer, which will connect those sources to the cloud. In Studio 3, we have two Hive linked cameras. They don't need a computer. They go right to the studio you've selected. Now we'll talk about Hive linking more in an upcoming video, but as you can see, it's very convenient to deploy Hive linked cameras, especially if you have multiple studios, multiple classrooms, conference rooms, et cetera, because you don't need to manage all of the different computers to connect older hardware to the cloud. Now, local mode is the highest quality and the lowest latency. It also does not use any of your cloud hours. Each plan from Hive includes cloud usage hours, and we'll talk about that in a moment. The basic plan is free. You can have one source connected to that basic plan, and you can actually invite up to five people to collaborate with you in that studio but you only have five hours of included monthly usage. Once you pass that limit, you have to upgrade to the standard plan. Now the standard plan has 25 hours of cloud control. Once you go over 25 hours, you are billed at three and a half cents per minute. So for each person that's using Hive over the cloud, once they go over the included usage, you start to get billed for that usage. And it is 
three and a half cents per minute per user per source. So you can see how it's important to use local mode when you're on the local area network so that you don't incur overages in your billing. Now, sharing access is important, but you may want to think about who you're sharing access with, and you may want to set up an expiration for that so that you have the ability to limit the access um, so that no one is you know, building up, uh, incurring cloud usage that you have not authorized. That is why we allow you to lock the local area network, and I'll show you that quickly here. So. In the tab here, we have the ability to lock the entire studio into local mode. Once you have locked it, a notification comes up letting you know that local mode is locked and no one from the far end can connect. This is important because you may not want anyone to be able to connect. Now, if when you are sharing access to others, I'll click the share button and take you into this really quickly. We can give access to someone here. Here's someone that I shared with recently. We can add an expiration date. And we could say, well, you know, you can have access until my event is over. When you're done operating the cameras, you are then kicked out. They then become a guest and they will not be able to use the cloud anytime past the expiration date. That's a little bit about local mode and cloud mode and some tips for managing your subscription and making sure you don't incur any unwanted overages for your cloud access. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial video. In our next video, we're gonna look at managing bandwidth, both upload and download speeds, and go into a little more detail on a local area network versus the wide area network, and you'll learn a little bit more about remote video production. I'll see you in the next video.